What's going on everyone? We are in the office for this video because I want to benchmark a very unorthodox graphics card. I'm calling it unorthodox because it's not one you would typically go out and buy for the purpose of gaming. This is more or less a graphics card you would use if your CPU didn't have integrated graphics. So maybe a Ryzen processor, you wanted to turn something into a HTPC, you would need a graphics card like this one. Now, which one am I talking about? I'm gonna go into the film room for a second. Uh, I actually purchased this a while back and I've been meaning to test it because I really want to know just how powerful an R5 220 graphics card really is. To be quiet, Dark Bay 700 brings luxury and silence to the mainstream. Luxury thanks to subtle RGB integration, full case modularity, and even USB Type-C support. And silence thanks to three included Silent Wings 3 fans and sound dampening foam all around. Click the link in this video's description for more details. So there are a few things that make this small little card unique first off its size. Of course, it's a one slot card because it is severely underpowered when you compare it to something like, I don't know, an R9 390 or the more recent uh, graphics cards like the RX 480, the 580, and something like a GTX 1070 on Nvidia's side. So not only that, it's also passively cool. This is just a, a heat sink on top here with no fan integrated. It's that low power. It doesn't need uh, dedicated PCIe power. It doesn't need anything except what you see here, it's just plug and play apart from the software you need to install. So what we're gonna do is pop this into that machine right there. So this is a rendition of Walter White, if you will, in there right now is a GTX 1080 Ti, one of the best graphics cards you can currently buy on the market, especially for the money. Well, maybe not today's money in the today's market, but you know, back when prices were actually reasonable. I already benchmarked eight games with this card and now we're gonna put this little thing in there and see just what it can do. A uh, quick glance at the specs here. I had to refresh my memory because it was a while back when I purchased this thing. 80 stream processors built in. Okay, it's not as bad as the 7 in this video, maybe over on this side of the screen uh, from way back in the day. Uh, but this is not, like I said, a very powerful card. 64-bit memory interface, a core clock of 650 megahertz. That's compared to the 1080 Ti, which is the ultimate powerhouse, if you will. 3584 CUDA cores. They're not a one-to-one. -one. Stream processors and CUDA cores are, are different all around. Uh, but you can kind of get an idea for how much more advanced this card is. Also a boost clock of 1582. That's 1.5, 1.6 gigahertz. So huge difference. This is not going to be a fair comparison. That's not the point of this video. I just want to show you uh, how viable this actually is in today's market. Like if you're thinking about buying something that's super cheap because everything else out there is extremely expensive right now. Yes, even starting to work into the 1050 Ti territory, the RX 560, um, this thing might be something you're considering. We're gonna find out in this video if it actually is something you should consider for gaming. So let's pop it in, let's install the software and see what kind of frames we get in today's modern games. All right, so first things first, we do want to uninstall the previous NVIDIA driver. It just eliminates the hassle that might show up in the future, especially when we put the AMD card in there. Um, although in today's day and age, it's, it's pretty simple to do. So we're gonna uninstall this and we're gonna power off the PC, pull out the 1080 Ti and then pop this bad boy in. We're actually gonna have a few PCIe cables, uh, power cables just kind of laying around in the case. It's gonna look really weird. Also, this card is so small. I don't even think people are gonna think this is a graphics card. They'll probably suspect it's something like a sound card. That's what, yeah, that's what today's sound cards look like. It's about the same form factor here. You know, it's funny. I think it takes longer for the NVIDIA drivers to uninstall than it does for them to install. Oh. Okay, this is not where the screwdriver belongs. It doesn't belong in the kitchen. Okay, we're just gonna uh, just gonna leave those there. This is a 1080 Ti from Gigabyte. For those wondering, you can find it linked in the video description. Although I don't recommend you buy something like this now because uh, it's gonna cost upwards of a thousand dollars, which is a bit ridiculous. It does look pretty sweet though. It doesn't come with a back plate. Probably the only aesthetic thing I would add to the card, especially for the money. But uh, it's all right. Here we go. Wow, this is this is so small. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna secure this thing to the to the chassis. I'm just gonna leave it hanging like that. It's just so light and uh, and tiny. All right, and we're gonna power it back on. I'll leave the glass off. So what I have in here right now, actually, I forgot to say this earlier. This is a Ryzen 7 1700X. 
So Ryzen CPUs don't have integrated GPUs, which means that you will need something like this if you want to run an HTPC uh, or even game. Like this is probably the bare bones graphics card for gaming, but you will need this if you want to connect your PC to a monitor and actually see something on screen. Um, so just because the motherboard has, you know, like HDMI out or DisplayPort out, uh, those connections are actually for the up, up and coming AMD APUs, not for Ryzen CPUs. All right, our screen is ultra low resolution. That's not a problem. Let's go to AMD auto detect. Okay, so it looks like the max resolution we can run with this card via HDMI is 1080p. So I've tried changing it here. The highest we can go is 1080p, 1920 by 1080. And then also if I go into the Catalyst Control Center, which you know this is old school when we're back to the Catalyst Center, uh, this will also only allow us to go up to 1080p. So we're basically, yeah, we're, we're, there's nothing really we can do here except stay in 1080, which is fine, but we're going to benchmark in this resolution here. We're gonna try 1080p. If we have to lower the in-game resolution, then we will, uh, but we'll keep the standard resolution to 1080 because I think that's what most people will desire with this card. Uh, also, the, the, the benchmarks that you're gonna see, we're gonna have a full-on 1080 Ti, which is basically running with maxed out in-game settings under most circumstances uh, against an R5 220. And what I wanna do is see what we need to set the in-game settings to in the given resolution to achieve roughly 60 FPS on average. We'll also have 1% uh, and 0.1% loads to uh, to, to, to look at. So we're going to start first with GTA 5. I love using GTA 5 because it's an all-around decent benchmark uh, and it's pretty well optimized as well across all platforms. So uh, yeah, let's cross our fingers here. Okay, so just uh, on the on the loading screen here, it's pretty trashy just like watching the cursor move left and right here. I, I think we're on like a 15 hertz refresh rate, which yeah, that, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, resolution set by default to 800 by 600. I think we're gonna try, I, I don't even know if we should try 1080p in this game. I don't even think it's worth it. Um, let's drop to 720p. We are going to keep things on, let's just do the default here. It's just on normal, which is pretty bare bones and uh, see, where we, see where we end up here, just as like a, a starting point. With the Ryzen 7 1700X in there, I, I think we're gonna average around 20 to 30 FPS. That's what I'm thinking. In 720p, upscaled to 1440p on the monitor, not that it matters much. So yeah, I think I think it's gonna be okay considering the resolution, but at the same time, like you're only paying roughly 40 or 50 bucks for this graphics card out of the box. So yeah. Okay, this is pretty painful. Uh, what is this? 13, 14, 15 FPS? I, I totally forgot that like the frame rate for GTA 5 is at the bottom as well. Uh, but this this isn't looking too good. I do have this game being benchmarked off of a hard drive. It's 7200 RPM, one terabyte WD blue. Uh, the same was benchmarked for the 1080 Ti. So that's pretty even across the board. This this is this is noticeably taking longer though. I, I can tell like I don't I don't know why the graphics card would limit things here unless it's just straight bottleneck to you know just where it's crapping itself and not able to load the first frame. Uh, this transition is much longer than than it was with the 1080 Ti. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. I wonder if the game just froze. I mean, I'll take that as a sign. Okay, now we just have a, now we have a black screen. GTA 5 has stopped working. <laughs> so the whole game just crashed because I'm just gonna assume because the graphics card couldn't handle it. We got plays.tv going crazy over here. Wow, plays.tv, really? All right, we'll just cancel that. And I think we'll just average that frame rate out to around 14. Let's just say 14 FPS. And that's at a resolution that's that's literally half of 1440p across. And it's technically one fourth of the total pixel count of 1440p. So the next game we'll test here. Let's go, let's let's go with something a lot lighter on the on the graphics card. Let's do Counter-Strike. Uh, see, let's go and see if we can hit 60 FPS and 720p with this one. Because I know that a lot of professional CSGO gamers, I think the camera girl can uh, can attest to this one. They don't care much about the in-game you know, details and, and stuff like that. In fact, I would say that a lot of people don't care about the resolution either. It's all about the frame rate. You wanna have that quick you know, reaction time. Uh, and if we can hit 60 FPS with a $50 graphics card, you know, that's not too bad. Offline with bots. 
I'm gonna go to Nuke map because Nuke is a pretty large map. Okay, so we're still getting the same trash frame rate here. It's really strange. This is like almost the same. 16 to 17 FPS it looks like on average. This is totally unplayable. I think any uh, pro or non-pro could agree. Let's see, can I shoot this guy? Yeah, this is like, like my clicks, my shots being fired are delayed on this. So it, it's, I don't even know what's going on, but it's totally not going to work. Let's see if we can drop the in-game settings even more and work out something. Let's see, we're in 1080p now. So let's drop to 720p and then we're going to drop all of these in-game settings to very low. Jesus, I'm getting absolutely wrecked by bots. Are you... <laughs> <laughs> Your smile behind the camera. I really wish people could that's such a, a smug smile. All right um, This is a bit more playable. We're, we're just easing above 30 FPS still not recommended again and uh, Remember our in-game settings are basically trash. So This just this just isn't uh, this isn't gonna work even with CSGO, which I'm surprised by this this tends to be you know a CPU weighted game, but as of now, I'm seeing the R5 220 just, yeah, it's just it's just not keeping up at all. We're at 40, 45 FPS, up to 50 here, and I don't even know where I'm going. Like, what am I, what am I even doing in here? Oh, there's a guy. Oh, God, I, how many shots is he gonna take to the chest before he drops? Okay, so we're gonna call CSGO not playable either. Oh, Plays.tv, I don't even know how to turn this off. It's been so long since I've used this. Uh, yeah, CSGO is a no-go. Let's do one more game. I'm just I'm just curious. We're gonna hop into City Skylines. Now, I, I'm gonna test this one uh, on camera live because I think that this game has a chance. CS, uh, CSGO, City Skylines is uh, a pretty CPU intensive game, especially when you start zooming in. It uses a lot of CPU resources. So I think that uh, this one, We'll probably hover around 15 or 20 FPS, which for City Skylines, honestly, isn't that bad. With the full-on 1080 Ti 1700X uh, and 16 gigs of, of system RAM, I'm averaging around 60 FPS. So 20 from 60 isn't as bad a cut as, you know, 140 to 15. So that's what I wanna see uh, in this game. I wanna see something like that. If I don't, then I'm just gonna completely write off this card as, as ever being a possibility for gamers to, to utilize. Wow, Cities is not responding. This sucks. All right, so we're gonna give it another shot here. I'm just gonna reload it one more time. This is just an all around crap storm. Okay, here we go. Get rid of that, maybe that's tripping it. We are sporting, what is this right now? Uh, a solid four FPS, totally not playable as is. And I bet if we zoom in, it'll drop to like zero. Okay, let's try. Yeah, let's just zoom in here. Three, two, what are we at now? Sitting at a solid three. Okay, so everything was set to high. So like I said, that's probably why it refused to run. Shadow distance, very short. And isotropic filtering off anti-aliasing already disabled and everything else is looking good uh we're looking at nine fps wow this is just this is never this is never gonna work those buildings look so pixely right now so you can actually you know zoom in i think the frame rate's much more doable than it was let's try to build some stuff uh wow i'm like bankrupt right now I'm like, i can't even build anything i mean you could technically play this game with these settings at this frame rate it's not like you know the end of the world especially for a game like this where it's, it's not very fast paced you know but it's still just a stark difference from uh from a decent graphics card i mean even with a 1060 in here you're looking at maybe a 10 percent delta between the 1060 and a 1080 ti just because this game does utilize a cpu so much more so than it does the graphics card but with the r5 220 in here now it's just not, it's its not keeping up at all. We do now have the graphics card as the bottleneck, especially for this game. And uh, I don't know, it's just cool to see how things completely turn. Like the tides turn totally when you switch from something like this to something that's like the size of, you know, toast. So with that, I think, uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and show the, the other benchmarks if they're able to be benchmarked, you know, the other games. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up. I think you guys know you know where this one's going though. And I think for 50 bucks, 
you should look elsewhere or save a little more money if you can and get something that's, uh, I don't know, used. Maybe like an R7 370 or, uh, or older than that. What do they have? HD 6950s. Uh, things that are, you know, uh, three or four generations older than this. Because if you get something new that's really underpowered, you're still going to be worse off than if you got something that was four or five years old, but that was decent at the time. Well, there you have it. I was really hoping this thing would pull through at least, you know, give us around 30 to 40 FPS in one of the games we tested. I'm showing you the remaining graphs now. I, I, it's not even worth discussing. I was gonna go through each one and talk about the differences and, and the in-game settings I had to use to obtain the frame rate, but this thing wasn't even pushing 30 frames in something like CSGO at the ultra lowest resolution that I would be safely, you know, considering in a video like this anyway, and then also with the lowest in-game settings. Uh, I was just really disappointed with how this thing performed. Now, that's not to say that the R5 220 should never be considered, I just don't think it should be considered for gaming, period. Unless you want to go back to something as old as like the original Sims, which, you know, come on, is that real gaming? It's arguable. I would say that's more or less retro at this point, which sounds really weird because I grew up playing that game, but you're not going to play anything relatively modern on this. In fact, the only thing I'd recommend this for is for someone who wants to do just, you know, light office work, maybe you have an R3 1200, you know, you spent maybe 100, 200 bucks on your CPU and you don't want to go out and get a graphics card, especially in today's market. You just want to do some office work, maybe browse the web. This will let you do that, albeit not in a high resolution, but at least it will give you that option with the Ryzen platform. On Intel side, just use integrated graphics. You don't need something like this. I will say though, considering how affordable Ryzen actually is in today's market, this is not something I would be, you know, ashamed to say you should go after if you want something like an HTPC with a Ryzen uh, CPU, or if you want to do what I mentioned just a second ago, you know, browse the web, uh, use you know, Microsoft Word and Excel and PowerPoint. This should handle that just fine. Just don't go out and buy something higher than like a 1080p monitor because you're not gonna get those resolutions with this unless you go DVI. Uh, and even that's gonna be a little, little finicky with the software because it's all so old. That said, it's gonna be pretty cheap. It's gonna be pretty quiet. I mean, it's gonna be virtually silent. I don't think there was much coil on it all from this card. And there is no fan. It's all passively cooled. It's super thin uh, and you can, you know, just, take it out and put something else in there whenever the prices for graphics cards actually go back down. So it's not a bad interim graphics card if you really wanna call it that, uh, but it's not something you should be considering for gaming, period. Not that that's much of a surprise. I mean, come on, 80 stream processors. Now for those desperate to get into PC gaming right now, whether it be for competitive gaming or for you know in-house gaming with friends, uh, I would say that you could do one of two things. First off, wait, be patient. I think these prices are gonna go down eventually. I'll look, all the miners who are buying these cards are gonna end up selling them eventually uh, and I expect that the mining market will crash to some extent soon and people will end up cashing out that's when you'll see a flood of used uh, graphics cards on the market especially on sites like eBay and Craigslist so stay tuned for that uh, and they'll realize they're not going to get their asking prices for them the lower prices it'll take a little bit of time but you got to be patient for it and you'll save a lot of money in the process uh, or you could buy ultra old not ultra old you know not something like uh, this cheap either, but I would say back to maybe two or three generations ago, so maybe GTX 700 series or 600 series, and then AMD side back to maybe Radeon 6900 or 7900 territory, you might be able to find some decent deals there. Although AMD graphics cards, because they're better performers generally when it comes to mining, are gonna be a bit more expensive. So I would lean more towards the green team for uh, used graphics cards in the current market. With that, if you have anything else to add, I'd encourage you to comment in the comment section below. I like to read comments when I post the video within the first hour or so just to get a feel for how you guys are receiving the video. I also take a look at the thumbs up and thumbs down ratio. So give this one a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Thumbs down for the opposite. Let me know why in the comments below. Be sure to click the red subscribe button if you haven't already and the bell notification icon so you can get notified when videos like these go live. This is Science Studio. Thanks for benchmarking with us.